Brian, thank you. Happening right now, military equipment is finding its way onto our area streets. Pro News 7, Selena Lewis brings you the first part of a two-part series, From War Zone to Main Street, how military equipment and weaponry wound up on our streets. She joins us now live in the studio with more. Selena? Thanks, Larry. Well, in the first part of our series tonight, we'll take a look at how local law enforcement agencies are allowed to legally get a hold of armored vehicles and assault rifles that can cost up to a million dollars. This is not Iraq or Syria. It's Clovis, New Mexico. Population 39,000. So why do they have an armored vehicle designed to withstand mine blasts and machine gun ambushes? The answer, the Federal 1033 program. Passed by Congress in 1997, 1033 allows surplus military equipment to be given to local law enforcement agencies. The 1033 program offers anything from staplers all the way to aircraft and anything in between. The Clovis Police Department opted for one of these, a mine-resistant ambush-protected vehicle, also known as an MRAP. It's kind of like a tornado shelter. People put tornado shelters in the ground hoping they never have to go inside of it if a tornado were to show up. This same concept with this vehicle. We hope we never have to deploy this. However, some feel just because the police can get this equipment, it doesn't mean they should or that they even really need it. I would say city SWAT units could probably use a lot of the equipment that's available. Uh, it's, it, it provides capabilities that they need. But there are some things like helicopters and armored personnel carriers, the MRAPs and the MATVs, that are just, uh, it's, it's, it's a little bit much. The Clovis SWAT commander admits they haven't had much use for it yet. We've used it one time in the year and a half, we've had it almost two years, for a violent confrontation. And our officers were safer than they were otherwise. Other than that, it sits right here and holds the concrete down. And even though the national crime rate is the lowest it's been in a generation, according to data released by the FBI, requests for military equipment from the 1033 program are at an all-time high. I cannot think of any great reasons for a local police department uh, that's at the suburban level to have an MATV, a Max Pro, or an MRAP. I can't think of any, any great reasons. Uh, I think the reason they do is probably that they're cheap and they're available. Some veterans, like Captain Vonnenberger, worry that giving local law enforcement access to military-grade equipment is a slippery slope. I think that if the police have access to military-grade weaponry, and equipment. They're going to be more encouraged to use that immediately. Especially, he says, after seeing MRAPs being used during the protests this year in Ferguson, Missouri. I think what we saw in Ferguson is, is terrifying. I, don't, I absolutely do not want that in my community. If, if Brantford, Connecticut, you know, the place where I grew up, had you know, an MATV rolling down the streets, I know what it's like to sit in that MATV. I know what it's like to look out that bulletproof window and it's, you see things differently from inside that vehicle. I don't care who you are. Now, police departments claim this equipment is free to taxpayers, but tomorrow we'll look at how much this equipment actually costs to buy, ship, and maintain on Pro News 7 at 10 tomorrow. Reporting live from the Kennedy Broadcast Center, I'm Selena Lewis, Pro News 7. Selena, thank you. Let's get you up to speed now on the high-profile murder for hire trial of Amarillo plastic surgeon Dr. Michael Dixon. Today, jurors were presented new digital evidence from DPS, including text messages between Dixon and David Shepard, the man who pleaded guilty to murdering Dr. Joseph Sonier. Now, a trooper testified that Shepard allegedly texted Dixon about staking out Sonier's home. The day after the July 10th murder, Dixon and Shepard allegedly made dinner plans and talked about celebratory cigars. Pro News 7's Adria Irahita is in the courtroom. You can follow her for complete 360 coverage on ConnectAmarillo.com or at KVII Adria. Today, a man pleads guilty to killing his father and is sentenced to 30 years in prison. Sean Hooten says he stabbed his father, Perry Hooten, to death last year. The elder Hooten was hospitalized before he died of his wounds. Randall County District Attorney James Farron tells Pro News 7 Hooten must serve at least 15 years in prison before he is eligible for